I think there is a lot of momentum around what's going to happen. Uh, it's been several years since the bailouts and the bankruptcies of the General Motors and Chrysler. They had uh, talked about a tie-up in 2008 before the financial crisis really, we were in the teeth of the financial crisis. It didn't work out. But this isn't a new idea necessarily to consolidate two of the big three. Uh, Rick Wagner, former CEO of GM, had approached uh, different parties. There was talk about this when they were stronger. The, the deck has changed a little bit. Uh, you know, a lot of talk about the technology investments that are needed and that you're going to need partnerships, you're going to need uh, a lot more capital, and you're mm -hmm. going to need to spend less money on developing the things that are, are, are kind of today's industry in, in the future. And, and, boy, it sure would help if you had a really, really strong lock on that pickup truck and SUV market in the U.S., which isn't really going anywhere anytime soon. So who would you, uh, who would emerge as the, the two players, so to speak? I'm, I'm going to channel my inner Sergio Marchionne here. Uh, Sergio, of course, died last year. I had a lot of conversations with him over the time that he was running Chrysler. His dream target, I mean, he talked to everybody, right, and he was very hot mm -hmm. on consolidation. He, wants, he wanted a partner, and, and clearly the, the, the successors at Fiat Chrysler want a partner. Um, General Motors is the company that he would like, would have liked to have partnered with, and I still think, um, as much as I can think, that this is a, an ideal partner. They would have a very sweet position in the pickup truck market. There's a lot of synergies there, obviously. Uh, GM pulled out of Europe and could use a, a bit more uh, balance in the global <laughs> lineup, and Fiat Chrysler, believe it or not, makes money there. Well, uh, yeah. GM brings uh, China to Fiat Chrysler, which they don't have. And autonomous, GM is making a lot of moves there, and, and, and Fiat Chrysler needs a partner in that area. So what would it take for a deal like this to actually go through? And, and you know, keeping in mind there's been a lot of other uh, merger talk with Fiat yeah. especially. Um, but is there, do you think, resistance from U.S. regulators? Is there resistance from the U.S. buying public? Or is it simply resistance from, say, General Motors? I don't think, I think it's resistance from General Motors. I don't think anybody in the buying public really thinks about who makes the Jeep who makes the Silverado, if it's General Motors or Fiat Chrysler or both. They're, they're, the brand loyalty is big. The, the, you know, we've answered all the questions about what consumers care about when both of those companies went bankrupt, and they're still selling a lot of automobiles in America and elsewhere. Um, whether or not uh, federal regulators would have a problem with this, I think, is an old-school issue because these two companies combined today have less market share than, than, they, than General Motors had when I started covering them uh, 20 years ago. So they aren't, they aren't huge players. Maybe there would have to be some uh, 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 moves made in the pickup truck lineup to get rid of one of the brands like G GMC mm -hmm. to uh, uh, assuage uh, regulators. Uh, but really, there, there isn't a, as much overlap uh, as you would think in the two product lines. And, and uh, they would still uh, have a very formidable competitor in Ford Motor Company right now, which does dominate the pickup truck market. Yeah. And Toyota and Nissan and others are, are coming in with products that, that are competitive.